I want to bring in Dr. Tom Frieden, former head of the CDC and president of the organization Resolve to Save Lives. Um, Tom, I'm so glad you're here. The White House said deaths and cases should be decreasing for two weeks before reopening. And as far as we know, that is not happening in any of the states lifting restrictions. Can you skip that step and still be safe? Well, I think everyone is facing really hard choices here. We all want to get back to our lives as soon and as safely as possible. And what we're seeing all around the country and all around the world is that even when governments say it's okay to go out, people are really reluctant because they're justifiably scared. So there's a real balance here. And what's key is to reopen as soon and as safely as possible. There's a big difference between saying go out and hike or walk or bicycle or a non-super crowded beach. These are all things that are good for people to do. But it's a question of societal benefit and public health risk. So if you're thinking about really crowded places, that's a big problem. If you're thinking about a lot of people getting together, that's a big problem. It's not so much open or closed. It's how do we gradually reopen and how do we track the numbers really, really carefully so that if we see things starting to surge again, we can get people safer. We don't want that to happen. Fundamentally, Stephanie, we have two weapons here. Uh, one is blunt, and that's stay at home. That works, but it's terrible for the economy. The other is a public health approach to boxing the virus in, testing, isolating, contact tracing, quarantining, using hand sanitizer, wearing face masks. These are more precise weapons, but they're not as strong. But the more we use those precise weapons, the less we have to use the blunt one. We don't want to have to go back in again. So it's crucial to protect the most vulnerable and take this one step at a time. How do we address jobs that can't or are not currently social distancing? We've got one Indiana meat processing plant where nearly 900 people tested positive. We have to look at all of the highest risk places, what we call congregate facilities. That's nursing homes, which we're terribly concerned about. We're going to see a terrible devastation in our nursing homes unless we do more than we're doing now. It's prisons, it's homeless shelters, and it's places like meatpacking uh, that are very, very close together. And we're going to have to think about ways to re-engineer those places to the greatest extent possible. Um, we're going to have to think of how they can be kept safer. And then as we understand more about whether antibodies actually do protect you, whether there's some role for people with antibodies to go back, I'm not saying to do that now. I'm saying if we find out that antibodies are protective, that might be one thing that we consider in the coming weeks and months. But Stephanie, there's one thing to, to really understand here, which is that as bad as this pandemic has been, and not only have there been more than 60,000 deaths, but there are uh, many, many people infected and very sick now who tragically will die in the coming days and weeks. But we're only at the beginning of this pandemic. Unless something very unexpected happens, until we get a vaccine, the virus will be spreading. But Tom, reimagining is important, but it's also a luxury. What do we do at this moment? Moments ago, my colleague Chris Jansing was talking about a prison where 80% of the people inside have tested positive. What do we do on, on this day to address that? Yeah, I think we have to put as our highest priority finding and stopping outbreaks in congregate facilities. That's nursing homes, prisons, homeless shelters, jails. There, we've got to ramp up testing. We've got a cohort or put in one group, people who are infected, we have to make sure that if COVID isn't in a facility, it doesn't get there by eliminating any non-essential visits. We have to improve cleaning so that there is uh, good environmental sanitation. We have to have universal mask wearing. There are a whole series of things that have to be done at every congregate facility. And the, the, the most risky, as I said nearly two months ago now, are our nursing homes where if we don't take urgent action, we will see at least 100,000 deaths in nursing homes in this country in the next year. That means we need to really, really emphasize protecting the most vulnerable, especially nursing homes. And what we're seeing from data around the country and ar around the world is that a lot of the cases we're seeing are part of large outbreaks, whether they're homeless shelters, prisons, nursing homes, 
meatpacking uh, 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 factories. These are things. These are areas where we need to do much more to protect people to the greatest extent possible, including extensive testing, grouping people together, protecting the vulnerable, and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. Tom, thank you for all the work you are doing to address this. And thanks for joining us this morning. Your expertise is so valuable to our audience. I appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.